So Timbo, today we're talking about, and I've got a real life example for us, but your elbow might not be your elbow. And it's like, what? No, well, your elbow pain might not actually be your elbow causing the pain. And this is something that, and this could, this is, we've got an example, but obviously it could be relevant to um, lots of different body parts. Um, but we've got the, the real life example was um, a young man, AKA Rousey, um, shout out. He came to his first School Calisthenics workshop um, two weeks ago now. And um, he had an issue with his elbow that in the morning, I used an example to say, well, I don't know what the, I don't know whether this, what it, what the situation is with your elbow. He was just complaining about it. He says, just consider that it may be coming from higher up the chain or, or lower down. So is it, it, could it actually be coming from your wrist or could it be coming from, from your shoulder? And um, things unpicked throughout the day and we saw in some muscle transitions, like what the actual uh, issue was and actually made to make some quite quick changes right there and then, which was just a nice example for him to feel and see, but for the other people at the workshop to see and experience and wanted to share this on the podcast and we'll go, we'll, we'll let you unpick it a little bit and we'll go into some detail, but for people listening to the podcast, just to consider like when, you know, we're big advocates of like moving pain free and enjoying your training and all that good stuff. And so, but understanding that when we're trying to redefine the impossible, we're trying to do some stuff that's, that's that's difficult at the time. We're trying to push the envelope. Like we're trying to do something we didn't used to be able to do. You're going to do a PB. Then we're pushing those boundaries that you may pick up niggles along the way. We're going to try and stay away from it. But when it happens, that just because, and the elbow is a real classic example in calisthenics that people experience, just because the pain is, you're feeling it at the elbow, is the elbow just getting bullied because you're lacking strength range of motion stability um higher up the chain i think Very that good. was an intro i think that I was think an intro that was a bit different to normal i couldn't help but thinking does he know his ass from his elbow <laughs> <laughs> that was a different question more than jacko that was a different question that. other than if you want some of the highest quality coaching available in the world of calisthenics like to dive into having your problems um solved and uh uh, what's the right word I'm looking for there? Solve is probably enough. Have your so, problems yeah. solved by our ex- expert team of coaching. Then you can also come to a workshop. And we happen to have one on this weekend in the great city of London. London, UK. Um, as it stands, as we record this right now, there's two places remaining. Now, I don't know, Tim, by the time when this goes live, compared to when we signed it, whether someone's, whether someone's signed up, maybe, maybe a couple's come along. Maybe someone's pulled out. And there's one, another one come available. Maybe there's three. I don't know. I don't know. But if Move you go, quickly. is that what you're saying? Well, I, I, I'm just saying I don't know. But all I know is I'm going to be there in London, sixth of uh, March this weekend. It's Sunday. Come and have a little bit of a Sunday sesh, a little bit of Sunday work, as the Rock would say. A little bit of Sunday work. Um, we're going to have a good time. It's a full day. Uh, the movement, strength, and play experience we call it. Uh, full day workshop. Uh, it's just 125 quid. Um, and there's potentially a couple of places still left. Uh, come and bag those, and we'll see you down in Landon Town. Right. I don't know what we're going to talk about. We're going to go. The wherever. elbow. I'm going to start. I sometimes say when I go to presentations, like, what are we going to talk about? I, like, I don't know. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to start talking. I'm going to see where we go. That is exactly <laughs> what's going to happen right now. There are many thoughts, Jacko. Many. Let's, let's have this, a yeah. jingle first, and then we should dive into those. The many thoughts. Okay. Roll that jingle. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. All right, Jacko, do you want some of my many thoughts? That's, um... Uh... Let me give let me give you a little rundown so people um or oh, some context. Yeah, let me just give the tiny tiny bit of context. So in the morning we're doing movement assessments and we're doing this, that, the other, uh, upper and lower body. It's a it's a it's a full body experience at the school <laughs> Um and young Rousey goes, um he's old you know when someone's I mean, I've been there for, for a long time, but <laughs> bad elbow and you the way you hold your elbow and you like rub it and it's like this and yeah, I still got something here and he's pointing to the outside of his uh, uh of his elbow and um he's like, Yeah, it hurts on on uh hurts it on muscle ups, um yada 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 and said Was he from Yorkshire? Uh I can't remember. 
<laughs> uh, I'm practicing. It's not a story. I'm practicing. I'm practicing for uh, um, um, a move to Yorkshire in less than two weeks. Um, you'll see the set. Those watching on YouTube, you see the setups change because I'm gradually selling everything in the house. So I now I don't have a desk at the moment. So I'm like, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> there's, we haven't got a dining room table. We we eat our meals on the Jacko. floor at the moment. We're going off piece. So round seat and his elbow it goes. Um, no, so I said to him, well, you know, it might not be your elbow. Could be your shoulder, could be your wrist. If you did it, if you're talking about when you're, uh, your muscle up transition, like we're probably thinking about shoulder, yada, yada, let's, we'll sort of see this afternoon. Um, and I, I got a little bit excited in this afternoon, in the afternoon, because in, I did preempt in the morning and say like, look, I've not screened you and I've not, um, and I'm not a physio, but just to give a bit of context for everyone else that was at the workshop to say like, his elbow pain might not be coming from his elbow. If he was complaining about from handstands, it could have been a wrist but it was like the context of that. So when we got to the afternoon and we were like um, doing some stuff towards the ring muscle up and we were in a, um, in the bottom of a ring, bottom of a ring dip where your transition ends and his right elbow was the issue. His right shoulder or his right elbow was like right out to the side and his shoulders in a bad, like in a, in a compromised position compared to the other side. And clearly he was lacking some like range of the shoulder going into extension. So, we went back and I went back and like with one on one with him, like just looked at some of the movement assessments to do around the shoulder. And it was like, OK, <laughs> I thought I was tight. Um, this <laughs> is, And so he so he felt it and he had a bit of an appreciation of that. And ultimately, it it seemed very much like the that posterior cuff capsule area was like ming, ming os to be technically um, correct in, 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 in that term. Yeah. Um, and then, and this is actually to throw this in there. I didn't mention this necessarily too that much, but like we didn't get into the chance to go into the deal of like, so why is that so tight? We just released it for him. He did, he just used a massage ball, just got in there, released it off, redid some movement tests and he had a load more range, checked the bottom of um, his ring dip, looked loads better. And then it was like, right, he wanted to have a crack at his, his ring muscle up and he literally pain-free did like three reps in a row and was like, that's ridiculous. It was like, well, it's not. It's just that you were tight. We found out what the problem was and we sorted it out. In the short term, in the longer term, this is maybe a, a good place to maybe you want to well, see where you, you start wherever you want. But in the longer term, it's a case of then going like, okay, so why was that so tight? Like, is it because it's weak? Had he previously injured? It? What's what's going on in there? Um, and find like try and get a little bit more root cause. But in the short term, it was like release it so he could feel what it was like to actually like have a um have a little bit of a uh better function a, a, around that shoulder and actually um, th nicely it doesn't always happen like this does it but in that scenario you took you gave some range to the shoulder the slack in the elbow or the elbow stopped stopped, stopped getting bullied no more pain in the elbow happy days well done well it was done. nice well he did it rousey did it good luck good. give him a sh shout out to rousey hope he's listening. strong intervention jacko identify the problem and i think that's probably where i'm going to jump on with this one is go i kind of hope this is kind of commonplace in the industry but i'm not sure that it is if you if someone comes into you with pain with elbow pain the question needs to be why is it hurting rather than mm. what is injured so if the elbow pain or the elbow is a source of the other side of the injury coming in and just going i'm going to treat your elbow because that's where it hurts is a really short-sighted way because the body isn't designed like that there's one big system all integrates together now to give an illustration of that if you let's take the lower body because it's people will probably have a bit more context around that the, the, the body tends to is designed in a way where it alternates for mobility and stability so if you take the foot the ankle joint that is a design a joint designer for mobility the next joint is going to be the knee, which is designed for stability. And then you have the hip, which is designed for mobility. And then you have the lumbar spine, which is designed for stability. And the thoracic spine, mobility. You get my point, right? Like a zebra. Through. <laughs> yeah, black, white, black, white. <laughs> um, so, the other th so if you take the elbow, the elbow is designed predominantly for stability. It has like these rotational capacities, but it's sat, sat between the shoulder and the wrist. Now, most people, if they have a problem with the knee, it's going to be caused because there's a hip problem or an ankle problem. The knee gets bullied by the joints above and below it. And in calisthenics, we have the same problem with the elbow. So if someone has golfer's elbow, for example, there'll be lots of people going, yep, that's me, pain on the <laughs> inside of the elbow. That is typically because we've done a lot of wrist flexion-based work, and we've now gone and shortened the flexors of the forearm 
basically doing ring muscle up kind of stuff, which is cause a tendinopathy around the inter or the inside bony prominence of your elbow. If we flip the other way around and go to the shoulder, well, let's think about the tricep and the long heads of biceps. So the long head of tricep attaches onto the scapula, as does the long head of bicep. So if we've got an issue around the elbow, where both of those two muscles are going to come and attach into, it's quite possible that it's being caused by the muscle's attachments or some dysfunction around the shoulder, which is causing additional stress to be placed on the elbow because the shoulder's not moving properly. So if you often find people who've got elbow pain and they go in like on the on the prominence point mm. of the actual elbow, the lecrinum process itself on the bony bit, uh, I don't know if it's the lecrinum, I think that might be muscle. I might have just randomly know. thrown a bit of terminology out there. That I was going to say, fun, I was going to say, I think it's called the funny bone, Tim. The funny bone. Yes, the technical name is the funny bone, <laughs> lecrinum process. <laughs> anyway, um, and then you go and dive up right underneath where you think you're going to go and release lats. If you come a little bit more underneath in towards the armpit, you're going to get long head tricep. You're going to roll that little puppy up at the shoulder and the elbow pain will start to drop off because you're taking some tension out of that muscle. So all, it's a really important thing to kind of to, to zoom out and go rather than what is injured, why is it injured? But what you've shown with that case study is that a relatively simple intervention of a two minute little bit of a massage on the posterior shoulder, which can hit and release things like yeah. all the fascial stuff which connects in there's lots going on we don't exactly know what it was that was tight but the principle was it hurt a lot and when you when you released it the pain went away yeah. and you're right and after that you then need to go and stabilize the joint in a better position but yeah, you, yeah i think people fall into that trap all the time it's my elbow my elbow my elbow well it's actually probably look you need to look somewhere else if yeah. you aren't getting like any success of treating the elbow directly. Yeah, that's what I was going to so say. That's if, why we do assessments, right? We look yeah. into like, what's the whole system look like yeah. and then we treat where we think the dysfunction is. Now, I'm glad you said that because I was going to say that if, particularly if someone's listening to this and they've had an injury, uh, like whether it's the elbow or not, what you've got something that you keep treating that area and you keep doing the thing and doing the thing, but it is not getting better, then either your intervention isn't the right thing for that area or it actually isn't that area. And if you, again, this is one of the things where if you, you don't have to be a coach to watch a video back of yourself and, and see and go like, all right, my right side there. Like, so this, this example with, with young Rousey was like, his right side did not, you don't need to be a coach to see his right side. When he was trying to go into the bottom of a dip or through that transition, his right side did not look the same as the left. And when it and, it and it just looked like the right shoulder was having a hard time and struggling to get into have any of that like internal rotation and, and extension at the shoulder. And if you and if you break it down and go like take away any sort of technical or fancy terms, go, OK, so his shoulder's got to move. We appreciate his shoulder's got to move through that transition. And then you go, the hand is staying still on the ring and the ring isn't really moving like it. And it's hanging from the thing, but it's not moving. It's like, well, if that's having a really hard time and that's not going to move, there's only one other thing that's trying to twist itself to make up for the tightness there. And you go, mm. OK, that actually makes 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 a bit of makes a bit of sense. Um, and and hopefully for people genuinely, if you like, particularly in calisthenics, where you probably it's not that you're doing bicep curls in front of the mirror and you can check and check that stuff is looking symmetrically in line. You might, you're upside down or you're doing this or you're doing that and you can't see. But if you video yourself and watch it back and, and look look a little bit closer, look for look for a little bit more detail, try and find those things if you've got an issue um, and start to think that principle that Tim mentioned all right from the start. Think of that principle of like, is it is it actually coming from there or is it coming from higher up or lower down in the chain potentially? I think the, the interesting one for me around this is just recognizing the patterns that you're trying to get into. And then when you understand that, the complexity of what happens when you put that under higher intensity or load. So for example, if you're trying to do a ring muscle up, which involves a dip position, you're trying, you have to go into shoulder extension. So the elbow moving behind the body. Now, if, uh, Jacko mentioned me, gave me a little bit of a heads up on this case study before we started. If you've got a pole, you hold like a pole behind mm -hmm. your back, so it's resting on your bum, palms facing forwards. If you can't extend and lift that pole away from your body, which will take you into shoulder extension without the, the the head of the humerus here and the shoulder diving f miles forwards and rounding through and looking all kind of like it's about to pop out the front of your shoulder. 
Like that's going to be a problem when you go into a dip position. Mm. And when you go into a dip position and rustle, muscle up on a rings, if you that's now unstable and under body weight. So you've got a lot more to do than standing on the ground lifting a plastic pole behind your backside. Mm. And you're potentially, so Tim, you're potentially like shifting relatively quickly between two positions, yeah. particularly on a bar muscle up where you're actually creating that like weightless feeling then you don't leave the bar and hit it again, but you sort of are in a way of like, there's a sudden like reactive contraction and mm. and that is going to place, that's challenging more so. Yeah. And you've got to go from that pull position to then into dip position. So your center of mass and where you and the if you get into the biomechanics around that, like the, 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 where you're pulling through and um, the levers and everything, that all changes very, very quickly. Mm. So you all of a sudden have to catch yourself in a deep, dip, deep, dip position. So if you are struggling with elbow extension, Either your body or your brain is going to compromise by going, fine, I'll let you have the elbow extension, but I can't create it through a good position. So to do that, I've got to let this humoral head dive forwards. I saw like an Instagram, like a very well-known and popular Instagram account that shall remain nameless. So just yeah. talking about like... You've been following my uh, Instagram account, my personal account. Right? <laughs> have you done anything on the shoulder recently? <laughs> um, and they were just talking about like basically treating mobility in the upper body like the lower body. And that annoys me. Because the hip is a completely different, it's a ball and socket joint, but the architecture of it is completely different to the shoulder. So we can't just go and hang out in long extension stretch positions and go, oh, that's fine because I'm increasing range of motion. Because whatever happens in the elbow is going to have a direct effect on the humeral head. Mm. And if you can't stabilize the shoulder and maintain it in a good position, then we're just, okay, you're getting range, but what, how, you, how you're creating that range could be because you're compensating up top. You can't, it's just, yeah. the shoulder is so mobile that you can't just affect it and go, well, it's absolutely, it's gonna, the hip, if you go and manipulate the, the ankle, the hip is largely going to stay rooted in the socket. It can't go anywhere. The shoulder doesn't work like that. Um, so, like, understanding what are the movement patterns that you're trying to get into, and then have you got the basic fundamental movement ability to be able to create those shapes? So if you want to do a handstand, can you get your hands overhead? If you can't, and you do it with, like, a, a straight back against the wall, then you're going to have a really hard time creating a straight back in a handstand and getting into a good balance position, upside down, unstable, brain having a bit of a word with itself mm. because you've now con completely flipped its world upside down. The vestibular challenge is different. All this sort of stuff is going on. So you've got to go and do the work to understand how to actually create the fundamental positions which I want to move into. And then you have earned the right to then go and play around with the actual loaded version of that. Now, not to say you can't do some handstand work while you're working on your shoulder mobility, of course you can, but you can't ignore these things. Just expect it to happen because one, you're gonna end up in pain like Rousey did, or two, you're just gonna hit a plateau where you just can't, you can't get through that ring muscle up transition. Yeah. And the, 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 the solutions that might be, just do some more elbow extension because you're strong enough. You just can't get, you cannot get into the shape that you need to get into. It's not a strength, it's not a specific exercise, not a technique problem, it's a movement problem. Yeah. And, you know, if you end up there in that problem, well, then you can come to our workshop or you can, you can join us online and um, you can take advantage of all that educational content, particularly in that we address all these things with assessments and movement preparation exercises to, to ensure that you, we don't end up in these positions. One final thing from me, which I don't want to open up a rabbit hole, so feel free to just go, yes. I sidestep this one. But no, you can just go, yes, that is really interesting. And let's talk about that in another podcast because it's potentially like very crazy. Another 20 minutes. So, so when we when we did that test of, um, I said to I said to him, look, ha holding the stick behind me, I guess I'm not, I'm not a flex, I'm not a really flexible guy. Like I'm not, I'm not, you know, when, when, you, when Tim does this, like you will get up to like a uh, parallel to the floor, like with your hands close together on the bar mm -hmm. relatively comfortably. So I come up and I, you know, show him, show him like what's sort of relatively normal, and he's like, "Crikey!" Because when he was doing it, I'm not even joking. He nearly couldn't move it off his bum. It was like, mm. and the, and watching it, having, I wouldn't have ever thought of this before, but over the years we've been exposed to more of the, like the neurology training side of stuff. Stuff with the with the guys at the National Circus. Stuff with Dr. Cobbett's ear performance. And I was like looking at him going and, and uh, with my hand, like trying to help him do it, like just assist him, <laughs> yeah. like going like, can you, can, no, I wasn't trying to rip it. I was just like, can, can you? And, and, and looking at him, guy was well put together, is well put together. Around, so, you know, I was digging you. Um, it was well put together. <laughs> and part of me was watching it going like, 
I believe that you it's like your body can do it. It's like your brain is currently just like not letting you. Act. It was just like it was just shut off. It was like, and this is where we come down to like, what's governing that joint being able to move or not? How much of it is like, yes, it's length tension relationship. Yes, something was obviously tight, so, but and and some inhibition going on, and yes, all those things, and all those things come back to like the brain, and his brain was just not letting him do that. It wasn't like he didn't have a bony block at the back of that shoulder that meant that it couldn't do that but that's almost what it felt like um and i just find that fascinating i think you've the, the interesting thing there that backs that up for me is that you didn't do a lot and you're getting no. three pain-free repetitions yeah, exactly. so it wasn't like all of a sudden we've done loads of stretching lengthened loads of stuff out you've basically told the brain just back off in this area yeah. give me a little bit more room to play with and now actually when you do that you allow the um, the strength that, that, that he did have to come to the fore and yeah. actually do what it wanted to do. I mean, yeah. it's, he, he rolled, he rolled the back of his shoulder, which is an exercise, which is in pretty much all of our programs yeah. for two minutes. It was super sore, but for, it did something I would imagine from a neurological perspective, which gave him the range of motion, which was required. Yeah. And if someone says that's a placebo, it's not, this kind of stuff does work. It wasn't a, it wasn't some magic yeah. that happened in, in from an, it, well, it is kind of, but, well, and also side of things, but news for you. Placebo also works. Yeah, uh, that's that, also that person who's saying it's placebo. Um, so, there is some very interesting stuff around that. Yeah, actually, yeah. About the, neuro- the, the biophysical model in physiotherapy at the moment is a real kind of talking point of of um, of, of, of pain manifestation. And <laughs> like I've done some stuff with Ian Horsey before, and he's like, "Oh, I just somebody come in and go. Oh, I, I, I hurt in this position. I hurt when I do a pull up. And he go, oh, should we do a pull up then?' And he'd be like, "Oh no, it doesn't hurt." And he's like, "Well, if it's just it's." It's the belief that it has of who the people you. Uh, it's mad. Isn't it's like it? down yeah, the hole. Yeah. It gets there gets to a stage of things where we are really. It is not always about the mechanical approach to a movement. It can sometimes be about whether you believe yeah. that you can do that movement or not, and so that puts it back firmly into the neural yeah. system. Um, I wanted to wrap up with one final because it's a, a nice message that would always um, ends up coming out in a workshop, of like, strength underpins everything in in, in calisthenics, and. The the, the 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 case study example Rousey like I say he, me saying he's well put together means that like there was some there was some junk on that trunk like he's trained he he, he had some he had some muscle uh, mass and he was strong and so it, the strength wasn't an issue at all and allowing that freedom of movement allowed the brain to access or allowing to use that strength he had if we aren't strong in some of these positions then we're going to have we're going to have a trouble it's not it's not that solution is going to work for him but mm. he had that underpinning strength so going back it then gets putting going back into that scenario checking that everything's all right checking that position that was causing him discomfort at the bottom of that ring dip and then him going oh i'm going to try try a few and he does like three ring muscle-ups in a row that's because he can do 10 12 15 pull-ups comfortably he can do 20 dips on the rings comfortably he'd like to do them for fun um, he had that strength underpinning it, and so um, that's something that always comes out, uh, and is a message to sort of um, keep banging. I've personally been doing. We've talked since like since before Christmas without doing loads of loads of sort of basics and loads of just like general strengthening work, and just like my own training right now is feeling good off the back of like having just been consistently working a lot of like just just being strong in like those patterns that I want to be good at in lots of different patterns and ranges, did it, but, but just being, just being strong. And if you want to be strong and flexible, well then you need to be strong through those ranges that you're trying to go in. It might not be that you need to be like crazy strong, like 200 kilo strong, it might be two kilograms strong because you're in a compromised position. But the, the fact that you're building strength underpins everything. Do you want to shot this Jacko is for me? Don't ignore your weak links. I've had a lot of conversations mm. with the guys I'm doing an education course with around the shoulder around the stuff that you don't want to do is stuff that you actually need to do because you're not very good at it, you don't like it, don't enjoy it, so you don't do it. If you had nothing else in your philosophy about training apart from training things that you weren't very good <laughs> yeah. at, you'd probably get a lot better than most people would do when they in a very in a much shorter period of time, but we don't do it because it's hard. Yeah. Um, so if you feel like, oh, I just don't do that position and avoid it, you're, you've are you missed the point. Go and do those bits and work out how to make those things better and you get better all around, as you've proven with your great case study today. Nice. Thank you, team. 
Um, team me. <laughs> well, I'm a team. Oh, Rousey. It's Rousey in the team now as well. And it? listen, I'm including the listeners in the team. Um, it was like, thanks thanks for listening. And um, we hope that that has been, I feel like that would be one of our most helpful, uh, or particularly that anyone's been struggling with any elbow pain. If, you got, if you're off the back of that, you're like, ah, oh, just don't know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. I don't know what to do. Get in touch. Yeah. David at scorecardsaints.com or Tim at scorecardsaints.com is the email. You can get yourself involved um, in a seven-day free trial of uh, uh, of our online memberships. We've got the workshop at the weekend. New workshops will be announced soon. There's a movement and mobility uh, six-week online course. Uh, What's been... a place to start? Exactly. That's been changed to the 5th of April now. So we've... Um... Let's make a change on that. Is Georgie but, going snowboarding again? <laughs> yeah. So she's back from snowboarding <laughs> so that we can do that. Um, that's starting the 5th of April. That's a great place to get started with. They're understanding your body. We do lots of assessments on that, but we there's a, you know, obviously the focus on movement and mobility. So getting into better positions, getting into better postures, creating more range of motion, but being strong and stable and your brain being happy in them um, to make some long-term change over six weeks and beyond. Do you know what we do really well, Jacko? We actually have, like, you know, I don't know, blow our own trumpet. Go on, you do it. Blow it. But, like, Bye. our online program, our online program is, like, we cover all this stuff off. You mm. know, the, you know the, people, the problems that people come to us, we have, like, we have a solution for them. So if you don't, if you are having a problem, we have undoubtedly got a solution for you. So get in touch. We, yeah. we are here to help. We genuinely care about you moving free, freely and having fun and enjoying your training. And we are big advocates of not being in pain because pain is miserable. And remember, your pain is your brain's way of telling you that there's a problem because that's the best way that it gets us to listen. So take action, people. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm going to wrap the podcast up by blowing my own trumpet. <laughs> it was like a Vuvuzela. Remember them? <laughs> Shout out to Africa. <laughs> um, right. I'm going to go. I think that's it. Yeah. Keep exploring. Are you, are you going as well? Don't stay here without me because then it's that's just right. become the Jacko podcast. It won't be like... Won't be <laughs> go on, sorry. Go on, you, you know, you do. You, you, you're, you're, but I'll, I'll, I, I, I don't really have to do the wrap-up other than class dismiss. So I'll... Um... No, that wasn't it. That wasn't me. That, that wasn't me saying. Uh, false alarm. Until next time, keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength and play. Take some action. Be pain-free. And we'll see you next week. Class dismissed.